The snipping tool in Windows 7, which I also believe is in Windows Vista, I'm not sure about that. If it is, go ahead and leave a comment whether it's in Vista or not. Anyway, the snipping tool is something which is a screen capture utility a lot of people know about, but don't necessarily know how to use it that well, only because they never really dug into the options. When you find out what snipping tool can actually do, it's actually quite good. So I'm just going to show you some stuff. Now, the first thing I do is I don't need this text here, which says select a snip type from the menu or click the new button. I don't need to see that. So I click options, hide instruction text, first box. Now, the second box where it says always copy snips to the clipboard, I actually uncheck that. I do that because I don't want to paste this into any, any excuse me, into any image editing application such as Photoshop or paint.net or anything like that, or uh, paint for that matter. I just wanted to save the file. So I want to not copy to the clipboard. I just wanted to put into snipping tools, little mini editor, and then just save. The include URL below snips HTML only just means the website address, which may or may not show up uh, when you copy from web pages. I leave it checked anyway. Prompt to save before exiting, yes. Because if you have this unchecked, you may capture something you may forget to save. So you want to leave that check. Show screen overlay when snipping tool is active. I s do not have that set. And the reason is because when that's checked, the entire screen when you go to snip uh, turns into this milky white color. And I don't like that. So I, I like to have it not do that. So I just have that unchecked. For the actual ink color, I changed that to lime because I can see it better. And I have sort of a darkish background, so it kind of stands out more. The show selection ink after snips are captured. Now, you would ordinarily think that you always want this off. Not necessarily. If you are doing a rectangle select, for example, you may want to select your ink color as black and then have the selection ink there so it puts a nice border around it. That's one less step you have to do if you want to put a border, so it's actually good. If you're doing freeform, you definitely want to have a border around it or else things can get lost in translation. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. For the time being, I'm just going to have it lime and not show, so I hit OK. So this is what it is, and I hit New, and you'll notice that my uh, cursor changes into a pair of scissors. And then what I can do, actually I have it in freeform mode. Let me change that back. Relaunch snipping tool again. New, we'll do a rectangular snip. That's what I wanted. Okay, so there, when you're in rectangle, I'm actually glad that happened because I can show you this. When you're doing a rectangular snip, you'll notice the cursor is a crosshair. So if I just do this, and then it shows it right here. Now, the free form, which I'll show you with the border attached. Options, black, show, OK, new, free form. And this is the scissors one. If I just go around some crazy shape like this. Now, you'll notice how I added a border all the way around it. This is actually really good because otherwise the white parts would just uh, blend right into the white background and that would be terrible. So it's actually really nice that you have the option to have the border there. So there are instances where you may want to use it. So let's go back here to options, do lime, not show, OK, and I'll do another capture. Oops, actually a rectangular, and we'll do one of those. OK. Now, here in the little miniature editor for the snipping tool, there are a couple of other things you can do too. Typically, what happens when someone wants to do a screen capture is maybe they want to block out a specific part if there's text on screen. So, well, how do you do that? You would go to the pen tool, but the problem is it's way too thin, and it takes a long time to go over text like that. So I go to the eraser tool and get rid of that. Easier thing to do is just go to customize, choose a red pen, do it as thick point and round. So red, thick point, round, and you'll notice 
Look how easier it is to block out stuff. And you probably wanted it in red anyway. That's easier to do. And if you make a mistake, just hit the eraser and go right over it. No problem. And then um, once I'm done with that, and it does uh, remember the last thing you saved. So if, let's just say I go over this. It's not pretty, but who cares? And I'm done here. When I go to close, it'll ask me to save. So I just go to save and... It, the default name is Capture. You can save it as a PNG, GIF, JPEG, or as uh, actual single file HTML if you wanted to, which is an MHT. That's an Internet Explorer thing. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but PNG is good enough. And then save. And bring that into view. And it saved exactly as I showed it. So anyway, just to recap. Make sure you go into the options area and uh, change around some of this stuff because it is good. And the vast majority of the time, you do not need to bring this into a separate image editor to put on a border or block out text or certain things like that. You can just do it all from here. Get yourself familiarized with the snipping tool and you'll probably use it a lot more.